basically it is a circumvallate placenta in which the membranes they double back for a short distance on the fetal surface and the chorionic plate is uh, uh, very small in this given case so it contributes to second trimester antepartum bleeding not the first trimester and old multiparas are more vulnerable and it leads to low birth weight they are all the true statements then uh, a 29 year old with a history of infertility with recurrent pregnancy losses gynecologically she was remarkable in that she has got severe dysmenorrhea and it was relieved by NSAIDs there is a low luteal phase progesterone and she was treated with clomiphene citrate she responded and she conceived but the pregnancy resulted in a once more a spontaneous abortion within 5 weeks and her histosalpingogram is showing what is it showing it is basically showing a septate uterus which is a mullerian anomaly so mullerian anomaly patients they have concurrent renal anomalies associated MRI is a wonderful investigation they have a 90% miscarriage rate and uh, they don't have difficulty in conception but to hold the conceived pregnancy is a challenge with a septate uterus and they will have recurrent abortions is fortunate to basically remember now in this question we are showing you the gross appearance of an ovarian mass ovarian mass and its histology has been presented to you what is the histological hallmark which you are seeing in this uh, tumor anything that is very striking for you to call it as granulosa cell tumor call exner's bodies these are called as call exner's bodies which are the feature in case of granulosa cell tumor granulosa cell tumor produces estrogen hence whenever it occur in the young girls it lead to precocious puberty not delayed puberty and whenever it occur in the um, postmenopausal women it presents with endometrial adenocarcinoma because high estrogen produced by it lead to development of endometrial adenocarcinoma and uh, there will be a pelvic mass on examination and the main treatment for this is surgical that is the story of call exner body send ovarian carcinoma okay so actually questions will be very simple image based but you must uh, have that uncanny sense of guessing simple things when you are a house surgeon in uh, casualty a small child swallows a foreign body and uh, there is a huge differential diagnosis for it ultimately on x ray you will find something which is opaque found on chest x ray there will be a huge discussion what is that what to do with that etc so there is a reason the mind that knows can only lead the eyes to see the mind that knows can only lead the eyes to see the eyes cannot see what the mind doesn't know so there is a reason we need to train our mind to know and then let it lead the eyes to see the correct diagnosis so what do you see in this doctor what type what is the characteristic feature of this pedigree you must know five pedigrees how to draw them are they the receptive dominant excellent receptive dominant and the mitochondrial inheritances how to draw so it was an autosomal recessive kind of a pattern and uh, um autosomal recessive kind of a pattern which you are seeing which is sickle cell anemia in this case dukins muscle dystrophy is excellent recessive vitamin d resistant rickets is excellent dominant and leber optic atrophy is mitochondrial uh, inheritance is what you need to basically appreciate so what do you see in this image webbed neck and uh, 
shield like chest widely spaced nipples and sexual infantilism they are all classical of turners so in the turners if you take the vaginal smear typically it will be shifted towards left not towards right there is an index of vaginal uh, cell smear if you look how is the degree of cornification based on that there is an index calculated so that is typically shifted to the left not to the right in a hypoestrogenic state of uh, turner syndrome is what you need to basically remember now what do you find here clitoromegaly is what you are seeing clitoromegaly and hermaphroditism is what you are seeing but when is it a pseudo hermaphroditism or a true hermaphroditism when examined internal genitalia both ovary and testis are there iska matlab hai wo true hermaphroditism so congenital lateral hyperplasia also there is a clitoromegaly but they will only have ovaries not testis only ovaries a female girl with congenital lateral hyperplasia in whom the sex steroids are excessively produced like in 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiency there is a development of clitoromegaly but that is not a true hermaphroditism so but it is a differential diagnosis so whenever you discover true hermaphroditism with ovary testis along with uh, clitoromegaly they should be rare as females and almost all will develop female type of breasts and they will also menstruate why they develop female type of breasts because their ovary keeps producing estrogen if estrogen is there male or female doesn't matter estrogen jisme hota hai usme breast hota hai so that is the reason they will develop breast and they will menstruate and they should be grown up as females rather than males is what you need to basically understand now doctor you are finding uh, a patient who is having clitoromegaly once more virilization which type of congenital hyperplasia can lead to that commonly 21 alpha hydroxylase is the one which lead to development of virilism is what you need to understand if this is a normal cycle 14th day picture if this is a mid luteal normal cycle what does this pattern which is fern like represent there is an excess of estrogen in a patient who has got anovulation and uh, that matches with the clinical picture of polycystic ovarian disease so that is the reason anovulatory cycle with excess estrogen present is a classical feature of this kind of a fern like pattern is what you need to understand now you have given a drug if you give it daily then it is leading to the inhibition of the release of fsh and lh what is such a drug if given daily can lead to development of inhibition typically gnrh agonist like luprilin is the one if you give continuously it lead to inhibition if you give intermittently it lead to stimulation of fsh and lh is what you have to fundamentally appreciate now you are being shown a cardiovascular parameter which is rising throughout the gestation its value until it reaches a zenith by 20th week and it stabilizes there and it has raised almost to around 35 to 40% which parameter it is typically cardiac output there as if you take total peripheral resistance because the effect of progesterone it will decline if you take the systolic bp it will decline by 30th week very low but once more rises by 40 even the diastolic bp also will show a declining trend and only cardiac output shows a increasing trend is what you need to basically understand can online students can punch whether the images are having clarity in the online test some of the students are answering the question paper directly from the mobile phone 
if they are very busy in the hospital uh, to uh, attend uh, a duty sunday means duty na so they are even answering from the mobile phone they are participating into the discussion on the mobile phone so uh, and uh, by evening still if night duty is continuing they didn't get time in the afternoon to participate live they have the video available on the video library and that can be accessed on the mobile phone so life has become very mobile huh so yes divya is saying there is a clarity now if you take the various chains doctor uh some of the chains are produced only during embryonic life and they decline some are produced even epsilon and zeta both of them are produced only embryonic and if you take the delta chain it will be there in the embryonic and it declines over a period of time after the birth i mean uh, the uh, gamma chain delta chain is produced after the birth and it remains until about 6 months so this is the story of various chains now what was the question asked where is the zeta chain in the graph so two possibilities are there the chains which are produced only in embryonic life should be zeta already one is mentioned epsilon so the other must be zeta because they want to be seen in the uh, after birth 